Okay, so in 1991, Thomas De Becky and Robert Schock performed seismic tomography in the Sphinx ditch and they defined a space that they say is a void under the Sphinx. It's approximately measuring 9 by 12 meters and they called this space Anomaly A. And so now I want to show you approximately the extent of this rectangle. So it starts in this corner about nine meters from the center, okay, and then it extends for about 12 meters to the east, past even the wall of the Sphinx Temple, sweeps back to the middle for nine meters, and then back towards the beginning. And I just want to point something out that there has been no probe of this place, this space, to date. There have been many drillings around the Sphinx, but not a probe of this particular area. The closest probe that has been done was done in 2009 by Zaya Was and Mark Lehner and that probe is right over here. Here's the drill bit and as you can see this does not correspond to the space that I just described. And so what we need is to settle this once and for all is another drilling experiment into this area. And I think the best place to drill is right here on this line between, between if you count this as a toe, the thumb, so to speak, and this would be the second and this would be the third toe. And the web space between them is where the pyramid texts tell us that Zokar of Rostau is sitting, okay? So it would be sometime, someplace along this line within this rectangle where I would recommend the drilling is performed. So what is this line? In the pyramid text, when you walk into the antechamber of the Pyramid of Unas, to your left, which is the east wall, there are 36 text columns. If you, and you read this from south to north, in the 26th text column, there's the mention of Zokar of Rostau. One of my friends, Gary Osborne, he's a well-known author, the most recent book he's published, uh, Rendersham Enigma. So what Gary has done, he has taken these 36 text columns and imposed them on the frontal expanse of the Great Sphinx, sort of like a CAT scan. He's basically divided the, the Sphinx into 36 slices. And we wanted to know where the 26 column falls, the one that mentions Zokar. And it happens so that that slice exactly falls on this exact line. And a confirmation that this is a significant line is the fact that from this line, if we go exactly north on the meridian, we intersect the east-west axis of the Great Pyramid at 820 cubits. 820 cubits is 10 times 82 cubits, which is the height of the King Chamber in the Great Pyramid. It's the height of the Pyramid of Unas. It is the 82nd column where we find in the sarcophagus chamber a cryptic mention of Mehit. So there is something about 82, but what is that? Well, 82 is what the eye can count on in the night sky for the moon to return to exactly the same spot where it begins on the ecliptic. So 82 has a lunar significance, and that is why I think that all of these messages, numerical and verbal word messages, are sending us to this place right here. And to underscore the importance of this place, all we have to do is go to the Dream Stella, which is between the paws of the Great Sphinx. And there what we will see is an inscription that tells us that this is a holy place, the most sacred place in all of ancient Egyptian history. This is the place of the first time. And so this is now what we're going to look at on the Dream Stella, to exactly look at the text that tells us how important this place is.